So rather than wasting time uh, describing exactly how these charts work in every single motor test, I just want to go over here exactly what this chart is, what it shows us, and a bit of looking at some of the other things that the chart can tell us about motor performance when you're browsing through them yourself and trying to uh, compare different motors on different props. So to start off with, there are quite a few elements to this graph. The main axes that we're looking at are the motor speed on the x-axis. So everything going towards the right here is higher and higher RPM. And the motor torque on the y-axis. So the higher up we go, the more torque we're getting on the motor. The color bands in this shape in the background show us the electrical efficiency of the motor. So the amount of electrical power that we're putting into it compared with the amount of mechanical power that we're getting out of it. The more blue you get, the higher the efficiency, and the more red, the lower the efficiency. Each of these bands is a 10% uh, band in efficiency. So this pink color here is 50% efficiency. This is everything that's in the 40s, so 40 through 45 and 48 and 49. Uh, then this next band down here would be 30 and so on and so forth. You can see that the efficiency of the motor is not constant at different speeds, so going in different positions left to right, and at different torque values, positions going up and down in the chart, there are different areas where the motor is more or less efficient. And there's a definite sweet spot that you can see out here on the right of the chart. So that means if we are using any amount of torque loads at these sort of RPMs, uh, this particular zone is a 60% efficiency. So anywhere we're in here, we're getting 60 something percent uh, efficiency out of the motor. The colored lines that you see here are overlays of the static torque uh, requirements for a different prop. In this case, this is a Rotor X 25 35 by 2. So this is the amount of torque uh, that the prop requires to spin at each particular speed. And this is equivalent of the torque you see for a bench test, a static thrust test. So you can see what areas of the motor's performance that this the torque load of this prop drives through and you see a very low rpm we're actually in areas of poor efficiency and as the rpm rises up and the load of the prop increases we get into higher and higher zones of efficiency on the motor now of course with this being uh, a static test load um, this isn't the only uh, position the only area of the uh, motor's torque that we're using if you're doing uh, like a long dive recovery from a dive uh, the motor loading is going to be higher than this uh, anytime that the motor accelerates quickly you're going to uh, use more torque to get that acceleration and conversely when you're flying fast forward or in the middle of a punch out prop unloading means that the load on the motor gets lower than this point. And you can make a rough kind of guesstimate of the typical thing that people say is that your power draw in the air is about 30% lower than uh, what you see from someone doing a static test. So uh, you can make an assumption that your prop unloading is going to be kind of about 30% lower than this particular line draws. Although even in the air, because of dive recovery and, and uh, falling to your prop wash and stuff like that, you can uh, rise above that as well. So it gives you a bit of a sense of what area on the uh, motor's performance that this prop actually shoots through. So when you're looking at a motor, there will probably be a bunch of different props overlaid onto it, and you can kind of see where these different props go in terms terms of motor loading. You can see some props have a higher uh, amount of static torque load that they require than others. And uh, as, you would, uh, as you would guess, the DYS2030, being the smallest uh, prop from the bunch, has a very, very low static torque loading. So what this means in terms of efficiency is if your working load, the area of the motor's performance that you're using, falls inside of this sweet spot, you're getting the best possible performance out of the motor. It doesn't mean that the motor doesn't work if you're in an area of poor efficiency, but you're going to use more electrical power to get the same amount of mechanical power out of the motor compared to if you were in an area of better efficiency.
And because we know that we're using areas of torque both above and below the static load of a particular prop, we can see, for instance, here, this very light loaded prop. Since we're at the bottom of this sweet spot, prop unloading is probably going to push us outside of it. And so this light of a prop is not the best suited for this motor. The motor will still work and it will still spin really fast and we'll get all the thrust out of the uh, prop that we can. But if we put a slightly heavier load, we will actually get better efficiency out of the motor. Now the heavier load will mean more power. Just because we're in a more efficient zone doesn't mean that we're not using power to get there. And this zone can actually be quite a lot of draw, but we're at least not wasting battery power to poor motor efficiency, which just ends up being turned into heat. Now these two props here in the middle, uh, go straight through the sweet spot. And so that's not a bad place to be, although prop unloading is gonna push them down to the lower side of that. So we're not gonna get the best benefit uh, from that sweet spot um, that's possible, but these are fairly well matched uh, to the efficiency of this particular motor. The higher loading that we're seeing up here is pushing us outside of the sweet spot. And that's probably a better place to be as far as uh, making a motor and prop choice because of prop unloading pushing us down. This is gonna put us a lot closer to the middle of the uh, the efficient zone of the motor here in, here in the center compared to if we started in the middle to begin with. Here's another example of the same uh, chart set up on a slightly different motor. So you can see how the efficient zones have moved around. We actually have a, a lot higher efficiency down to this middle section of the power band. And we've got a much larger section of higher efficiency uh, there in the middle. Although the lines that the props end up going through that feels broadly similar. These two uh, middle ones are shooting straight through the middle of the sweet spot uh, and the heavier loads are just above it. Um, in this case, that 2030 is not quite poking out below it, but obviously still not exactly in the uh, ideal place that we want it to be. Now, if you have a prop that's too heavy for the motor, you'll get a curve that shoots way up here and you'll see that it completely misses everything down along uh, where the efficiency, the uh, sweet spot on the motor is, the motor will still run a prop if it's over propped. Um, but because you're in a less efficient um, area of the motor's performance, you're not going to get as much RPM out of it as you will uh, where you're uh, in good efficiency. And uh, you're going to have a lot more heating of the motor because all of that uh, waste efficiency is going to go just into heat. An important thing to keep in mind about these charts is that the area that the uh, that's colored here in the back only shows the area that was tested. So for instance, there's this gap down here at the bottom uh, down to zero torque. So this is the unloaded RPM of the motor. This does not mean that the motor is not capable of performing in this zone. It just means that the test didn't include it. The same is true on this left side of the graph over here. This does not mean that this is as high uh, performance that you can get out of it. This line on the, uh, the upper right side of the graph continues off to the left and all the way over to zero RPM, which is the stall speed. So for instance, back to this 7,500 kV, if you had something that had a really high load and the uh, prop load shoots off in this direction, this doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get all the way up into this section of the motor graph because this line continues off to the left. The test just doesn't look at any of the power band over here. Another thing to keep in mind when looking between multiple different charts is uh, to keep an eye on the scaling of the values. So if I, as I toggle between the 7500 and the 4500 kV motor, they look broadly the same shape and kind of in the same um, area. But if we look at the scaling down here on the RPM, we can see that this 7500 kV motor is getting nearly to 50,000 RPM down here uh, where this uh, uh, 2030 prop is crossing. And we're not anywhere near 50,000 RPM at that same position on the 4500 kV. Now, if you watch my videos, um, I will always try and show uh, when I'm comparing motors, I will show them uh, flipping back and forth in the same, uh, the exact same uh, view, so it's easy to compare. But if you're looking at these 
your on your own out of context um, it's important to keep that in mind that just the shape that you see here is only relevant if you have exactly the same zooming on all of the axes and that's important because there is something more that this chart can tell us other than just the efficiency of the motor, the, the efficient zones of the motor's performance. And that's this top line uh, that I've mentioned once already that on the uh, upper right of the chart. This line actually represents the torque curve that the motor is capable of at 100% throttle um, at this particular voltage. So this is actually a line that we can't cross. And there are some things that we can uh, infer based on the shape of this line. So a motor that has a uh, steep torque curve at full throttle is going to accelerate quicker and it's going to be able to deal with heavier prop loads without the RPM basically sagging more. We'll have some better charts in the future that make it a little easier to look at uh, the motor performance at different throttle positions, but this is some information that you can glean from it uh, even though it's not uh, the main focus. Now when you're browsing through the charts yourself, as you hover over different parts of the prop torque curve, uh, there'll be a little stats window that'll pop up and give you information about how much thrust uh, you're actually getting at that particular point on the, the uh, props curve. So you can use this to judge any amount of throttle, um, how efficient the motor is going to be performing um, at that level. And since we also know that this line here is the 100% throttle mark, Wherever this line crosses uh, the torque curve of the prop, that's going to tell us essentially how much thrust that this motor and prop combination would make if you did a static bench test of it. So if you want to know how much thrust you're going to get out of a particular motor and prop combination, you can find that point where the two cross, and the numbers aren't going to perfectly line up, but you can look between the two closest points and sort of estimate the, uh, the distance in between them and have a rough guess of what the static thrust you will get out of that is. So you can use this to compare any sort of prop on any sort of motor just by looking at these numbers. So for an example, I've turned off everything but the 3020 and the 3025 bullnose. And we can look back to the motor test that I did a while ago on this particular motor. So starting with the 3020, when I tested it at that time, I was getting 255 grams of thrust. Now I can look at this 3020 uh, line and see that this point here is 272 and the point below it is 248. So 255 would be right about here. And it's a little lower than, uh, than this line that's up there, but that just about accounts uh, for differences in the test. When I did that test, that was on a battery, and so there's a certain amount of sag. These dyno runs are run on a power supply, and there's no battery sag at all. So that gives you a sense of the sort of amount of variability. So right about here is our 255. That's where we tested, and where the line crosses is going to be about maybe maybe 265. So we're only about 10 grams off compared to the bench test that we actually ran on the real prop with the real motor. We can do the same thing with the 2035. Back then I tested this motor at 157 grams and we can see here uh, we actually have a point right at the crossing that's 170 and the next one down is about 152. So the actual point that we got on testing with the real prop is right about here, um, which is just about the same distance that we found on the previous one. So that's going to be just differences in the battery voltage and the amount of sag when we were doing the static thrust test. And we're only about 10 or 12 grams of thrust out compared to our peak numbers. So you can see just how close you can get um, by looking at these combinations.